Life Ceremony is the debut short story collection from Japanese author Sayaka Murata. It's translated into English by Jinny Taple Takimori, who has translated everything of hers that we've got so far. If you don't know who Sayaka Murata is, she is one of the most exciting and talked about and subversive and challenging Japanese authors of today. And speaking for myself, she is my joint favorite Japanese author alongside Miyako Kawakami. Sayaka Murata burst onto the scene with Convenience Store Woman, which is a pretty grounded and easy to read short piece of pseudo commercial fiction. It's a book that explores our relationship to our society, the ways in which we do or don't fit in as cogs in the machine. And this is something that we now know is at the core of Sayaka Murata's philosophy when it comes to her fiction. Everything she writes explores that, the relationship between an individual and the society in which they live. Convenience Store Woman didn't do anything too frightening. It is a book about a woman who is probably neurodiverse, she feels very autistic coded based on what she goes through, the ways that she interacts with other people, with her work, and she struggles. She struggles to fit in with how society operates and what society expects of her in terms of her personal, professional, and family life. In Earthlings, the next book that we got in translation, Sayaka Murata takes similar themes, similar ideas, similar characters, and does something wholly different and frightening. Earthlings is body horror. Earthlings is shocking, taboo, punk, scary. It upset a lot of readers. I absolutely love it, I love both books, equally and for different reasons, but as I said, they are tackling similar themes. Life Ceremony is much more Earthlings than it is Convenience Store Woman. For some readers, that's gonna just turn them off entirely. For me, no, 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 no. I loved it. I absolutely loved it in the same way that I loved Earthlings. But the publication history of this is something that's got me kind of interested. I want to learn more about how these stories were written, how they were released. For example, as you can see here, the UK edition published by Granta contains the short story A Clean Marriage, which I believe was the first thing that we ever got in English translation from Sayaka Murata. It was translated by Ginny Tapli Takemori, put onto Granta's website, and following that we got Convenience Store Woman. So these stories may have been written long before any of her novels, or maybe some of them were written before, between her two novels, after, I'm really not sure. But some of the stories in here feel like stepping stones towards Earthlings. Some of them feel like they were originally small ideas, small seeds that then led to Earthlings. There's one story in here in particular which focuses on one protagonist, she's a schoolgirl, but she has a friend who is clearly supposed to be the protagonist of Earthlings. She has a different name to the protagonist in Earthlings, but what she goes through is the same as what happens in the first chapter or so of Earthlings. So in some ways, we're getting kind of prototypes here. We're getting stories that explore Sayaka Murata's imagination, her ideas, her concepts. Sometimes these feel like B-sides to her bigger stories. Other times, early drafts. Or like if a band releases a Greatest Hits and that Greatest Hits includes a few demo versions of songs that are now really famous and you get to hear what those songs originally might have sounded like or what they sounded like when they were a little bit rougher. That's what you're getting here. There are stories in here that feel like Earthlings, that reference things that happen in Earthlings, but Earthlings clearly didn't exist yet when she wrote it. So these stories are similar. They also have a lot of overlapping characters. There are names that get repeated all the way through this collection. The point that I'm making is that this collection was clearly not written as a whole. These are disparate stories that she has written probably over the course of years and years, and they've just all been bound together, translated by one person, and published for us to enjoy in the West. But in Japan, originally, they've probably been published in magazines and journals over the course of quite a long period of time. That's the only way it makes sense to me. As for the content, like I said, these stories are quite shocking. They're frightening. 
and they almost all explore the human body. Sayakamurta is clearly obsessed with the human body and its relationship to our minds, our emotions, our societies, our families, our culture, our workplaces. The body as a vessel is something that she is clearly obsessed with and I love it. I love the way that she explores it. For example, the very first story in this collection is set in a world where it has become normalized that after we die, parts of our bodies are recycled and reused to make things. Furniture, clothes, those are kind of the two big ones. Our protagonist is a young woman who is about to get married. She goes to meet some friends and she's wearing a jumper made of human hair, the hair of someone or multiple people who've died. Her husband hates this. He is pretty much the only person in the entire world who has a problem with this and she doesn't understand why. He finds the concept of doing this disgusting. The idea that there is furniture made from human bones and clothing made from human hair and skin. This is normalized in our society, but her husband or husband-to-be finds it repulsive until something happens where he's forced to face this in a very intimate and frightening and kind of stomach-churning way, which I will not spoil. And there are several other stories in this collection that are like this, where the world that the characters live in has something strange going on that has become normalized, something taboo, something often to do with the human body. The titular Life Ceremony is a slightly longer story in the middle of the book in which funerals are now called life ceremonies. And what happens at a funeral is two strange things. One, we cook and eat the flesh of the deceased. It's put into a hot pot, a stew, a barbecue, something. I think traditionally it's a hot pot and we eat the body. Then people couple off at the ceremony and have sex with each other. Men and women, straight couples, straight pairings, couple off and copulate and hope that they will then have a child. The idea that the life ceremony is about celebrating the life of the person who died, celebrating their body, making use of their body, their body nurtures us, and the idea that death leads to birth and it emphasizes the circle of life. So what better time and place to have sex and try to get pregnant than at a funeral? Death leads to birth, leads to life, etc, etc. It's twisted and strange. And the protagonist in that story finds something wrong with it, doesn't get along with it. So in the two stories that I've mentioned, you've got a protagonist who isn't comfortable with this status quo, with this situation, but it is normal within those societies. And then in most of the other stories, you've pretty much got the reverse. You've got a very familiar society, a world that looks just like us. It is modern day Japan, but you'll have a protagonist or a group of protagonists who are doing something taboo and shocking and frightening. And those things will often remind you of the events of Earthlings. These protagonists might be cannibalizing in some way. They might be having taboo sexual encounters with family members or while they're underage. It's all very reminiscent of Earthlings. But over and over again, the events in this book are about people who don't fit into their society. Either the society is strange, and they are reserved and frightened and clinging on to what we consider to be familiar, or it's the opposite. Where society is familiar, society is something we understand and can relate to, but the protagonist cannot and is doing frightening, scary things because they can't cope in normal society. And then there's one story that's just a few pages long about a pair of teenage girls who find a homeless man in the woods and dress him up like a dog and say that they found a pet dog, a stray dog that they then adopt, but it's a naked homeless man. That one's just particularly strange and made me uncomfortable, but also laugh and then feel guilty that I laughed, and that's an interesting one. I really don't have any thoughts on that one, but for some reason it stands out because it's different to all the others and it made me more uncomfortable in terms of an ethical and moral perspective. And as I said, if you get the UK edition, you get to read A Clean Marriage, but A Clean Marriage is free on Granta's website, so you can just read it there. It's always been there, it's always been free. Well, it's not always been there. You know what I mean. And A Clean Marriage is a particularly interesting story. It's the final story in this collection, if you get the UK one. A Clean Marriage tells the story of an asexual married couple who originally connected through a dating app or a website, 
and they wanted a clean marriage. The idea that they will live together, share bills, share responsibility, cook, clean, have a copacetic living situation with no sex, and if they want to, the two of them can go off and have sex with other people and get their jollies, get their satisfaction elsewhere, but their marriage remains pure and clean and kind of asexual. But then they want to have a child. And there is a new artificial insemination-esque way of doing that. So they go to this clinic and have a consultation with someone to talk about this clean way of having a child where it will be genetically their child, both of them, but they don't need to have sex. And I won't tell you anymore. But A Clean Marriage is really, really great. I really enjoyed reading it in between Convenience Store Woman and Earthlings because it showcased for me what Sayaka Murata has to offer outside of Convenience Store Woman. I also feel like in that way it could have been the first story in this collection because it then leads into bigger and more frightening concepts and ideas. I wouldn't say that Life Ceremony offers anything new in terms of her philosophy and her ideas. She is treading similar ground over and over again with her stories. But as a neurodiverse person who very, very much relates to what she's exploring, how she clearly feels, and the characters in her narratives, I don't have a problem with that. But by the same token, Convenience Store Woman to Earthlings felt like a really nice jump. Similar themes, similar ideas, but she's now exploring them in more frightening and subversive and punk aggressive ways that shock the reader, and I found it a whole load of fun. Here, there is no next step, no next jump. We're still dealing with similar stuff, similar events. There's nothing in here that's going to shock you or feel like it's pushing any more boundaries in the way that Earthlings did. It's already been done in Earthlings. That's not her fault, because I think a lot of these stories were written before Earthlings. But the point still stands. If you've read Earthlings, you're not going to find anything in here that challenges you or frightens you or makes you sit up and pay attention. It's more of the same kind of stuff in terms of genre, theme, ideas, events, but if you loved Earthlings, that's fine, because you're just getting more of the same. More juicy, frightening, meaty <laughs> Sayaka Murata stories. More of her terrifying imagination, and that's going to satisfy you. It satisfied me in a big way. The stories also get progressively longer as they go. They start off really short, and the last few stories are huge, 30, 40 pages long. But again, they're all exploring similar ideas, and I don't really want to spoil any more of them, so I'm going to leave it here. I really think you need to read this for yourself. Check it out. If you loved Earthlings, you're going to love this. But if you didn't love Earthlings, you're not going to enjoy this, because it's still just as shocking and frightening and taboo, and the same themes and ideas are getting explored. For me, that's satisfying. More Sayaka Murata forever and always. I will just enjoy what she puts out. I relate to it, I understand it, I find it twisted and frightening and beautiful and lovely, and I always want more of it, and I'm glad we have it in Life Ceremony. Subscribe for books.